Hi everyone, it's uh, Simon here with Pixel Lab. We've just launched a new text trailer pack. I uh, just want to go through some of the models and generally have some fun. Now we built the pack to be sort of like a template or foundation for building your own work. So they're not a fait accompli. They aren't animated. They don't include lots of expresso, complicated rigs. They literally are just models which you can change with your own fonts or tweak to create your own bespoke tailor-made project. So there's quite a few here. I'm still scrolling. I think it's about 60 templates altogether. So hopefully um, there should be everything you need to get you started. Right, so going through this new pack, uh, we're going to choose one of these titles. Uh, let's choose, that looks like fun, let's choose Fracture. Now uh, turning on to the camera, that's really in the pack. Um, you'll see that the this fraction effect has been created by the font, um, not by a uh, sort of modeling preset. So if you want to have exactly the same effects, you'll need to download this font called Breakdown, which is currently available via this link, or a similar sort of font. You can recreate this yourself if you want to in Cinema 4D by adding a text, slicing it up, and moving it apart. But obviously this saves you a lot of time and effort. So let's see what we can do with this. Um, first, I'm going to put this into a fracture object. I'm going to explode and connect. Let's make this editable. I want to connect all these together so you can. The funniest of course, why I do this is by selecting children and using this quick plugin I called, uh, I created rather, called Cat Killer. And it just combines everything together, like so. If anyone wants Cat Killer, by the way, I'm more than happy to give it to you free. Stick that inside Fracture. Now it hasn't done anything at the moment, but when we select that and where's my graph? Say for example, add random. There we go. And you can have some fun with that. So for example, you might only want it to move at a particular axis. So if you just want it to come at the camera, let's change this to a bit more significant. And select random, select your effector, and that's pretty cool. Uh, of course, to animate that, um, you'd need to add a keyframe here. So you can either hit control click, or you can right click, animate, add keyframe. Or if you're lucky enough to have Cinema R16, all you have to do is click on that dot and it'll add a keyframe automatically. But R15 and before, you have to do it the hard way. So let's turn that to there, turn that right up. Back to the beginning and play. So that was a pretty cool um, first little play. Let's close that down and see what else we've got. Hmm, might be able to do something similar with that. So let's have a look. Groove. Hmm, how's this one been built? I didn't make this one myself, so this is the first time I've uh, played with this. Let's just use my cap killer straight off. Hey, hey that worked. Yes. So this time I'm going to do something slightly different. I'm going to use the fracture again. Stick the text into fracture. Make sure you explode and connect segments. And this time we're going to use the plane tool. Where are you? Ah, sorry. I will fall off to be linear. Let's put where we actually see it. Perhaps the other way. Okay, and let's see what happens when we move this around. I'm hoping it's going to drop a layer at a time. Hey, that's pretty cool. Right, but I want it to um, have a sharper, less of a gradient. So let's make the actual size smaller. Wasn't that what I wanted? That's the one. And I want the distance to be more extreme. So in your parameters, notice to 1000. So as we move this up, a layer will drop in. That might have been too much. Let's try 500. Okay, I want it to go just off screen. Cool, I like that. Let's see what else we can find. 
Uh, this one looks fun. Right, okay. So again, I'm going to turn the camera on to use the view that uh, has been set up for us. Um, ah, well, cool, deformers. One of my favorite tricks with deformers is to put them initially in the object they're deforming so you can use the fit to parent tool. But then afterwards, create a group, move your deformers out of the parent objects into the group. They'll still be affecting just this element, but it now means you can now move your objects within the deformation without moving the deformers with it. So for example, I wanted to end up, make this timeline a little bit shorter. I'm just gonna do this very quick and crudely. Let's change the depth. Start off with, let's say, one. And next we're going to change, that uh, should be Z. Let me just check that. Yes, it is. So that's where I want it to end up. It's where I want it to start. I just got you a little bit more animation. And that was done with, um, well, at least I don't think I've done, used any um, MoGraph. Again, I didn't actually create this one, um, so it's the first time I've had to play with it myself. Um, but, uh, yep, I think we could have some good fun with this. Okay. Um, maybe just one or two more. Actually, that one at the bottom was quite cool weathered. Right, so... If you wanted to add um, some sort of wear just around the edges, one thing you can do is, uh, it's got fracture on there already, which is quite cool. So again, I'm gonna use my cap killer tool. And if anyone wants this, you're more than welcome to it. I'm gonna turn that off for now. And I'm going to go into, I'll leave that on, because I like a bit of shading. What I'm gonna do is turn the textures off like so. Just makes it nicer to work with. Okay, and I'm going to go into line mode. Actually, I'll change to that one. Select my object. Uh, select loop. And I was going to do one letter for now. I uh, probably want more than just one, so I'm going to expand that by doing um, UI. Uh, which is to expand polygon selections. There's not U and Y at the same time. Imagine like it's two um, keystrokes on a piano, so it's U then Y after first concession. Uh, so um, next you got your, actually I don't want, I want to do lines. Let's do lines then. So UI, selection, set vertex map, and let's change that to 100. There we go. Great U. Now I'm just going to add some very quick crude colors. So it's going to be red. And just to highlight what I've done, I can make this one blue. And in alpha, we're going to go down to texture, effects, vertex map. And we're going to drag that vertex map into the selection. You can invert it if you want, but what I want is weathering on the corners. So if we put this blue on here, and fingers crossed if I hit render now, yep, there we go. We've got some blue around the edge um, using a alpha with a vertex uh, effect. So um, that's all very cool. But um, so if we get rid of those and use the weathering, or what I've called edge jammer shader, which is ready in the model, in your alpha, open up the layer. There's a vertex map there. You can drag this in. Um, I should see something a little funkier now. There you go, now we've got this kind of worn pattern on the corners, but just in the letter we've set up. So that's pretty cool, and if you turn Fracture back on, it should still work. Fingers crossed, there we go. So it just adds that to a little bit level of realism, very quick to do, but it can have a, a really large impact on your models, especially if you're adding a bit of grunge. There are plugins that can do this for you, but uh, this way it's free. Uh, it just takes a little bit longer. Okay, so let's see if 
Should we play with anything else today? Ah, let's play with some balls. Where are they? There we go. Now, um, you could do a um, clone and morph if you wanted to, for example. You could have a triangle in here, use the um, inheritance tag to morph from one clone to the next. But today I'm just going to keep it simple and I'm going to. Uh, let's see what should we do. Let's just do a random. There we go. And it morphs into the letters. Nice and simple. Of course, if someone wants a tutorial on how to choose the inheritance tag, with regards to morphing from one cloner to another cloner, I'm more than happy to provide another tutorial for that in the future. Should I do one more? Let's have a look. Because I'm having too much fun now. Uh, let's do something with that one. And maybe something with that one. Okay, and that's my limit. I'll stop now. Okay, so uh, 3D pin. This one's been created. Now there are some instructions in there. And if I turn the cloner off, you'll see it's almost like a vacuum form effect. So it's using this coll collision object. Uh, if you want to animate this, I'm to truth. Okay, it's going to slow my computer down a bit. But you can. Um, literally just pull the text in and out like so so at the moment it's referencing this text here called change text if I turn that off it goes off and let's choose some other random objects let's choose this figure let's hope this works and under collision, put the figure in there. There we go, it's doing its best. Probably wasn't the best choice. Let's turn the cleaner back on. And there you go, you're getting the relief of the character. And we don't actually want to see it there. There we go, we just want the uh, pins to move. So that's pretty cool. Uh, let's see, how's this one built? Right, the um, nice thing about this one is you've got these, uh, I can't really zoom in any further, um, but you've got these little uh, lens flare highlights. Now there's two ways of doing this. You can either, if you've got some natural specular under your render settings, you can choose highlights and you can then choose what kind of highlight you want and use thresholds and the size and brightness and so forth and you can get mixed results it, it works really well if you're doing a sparkling sort of sunset waves and you get some very realistic um, sort of sparkles on the wave tips but if you want more control I recommend using a light with a where is it let's do that light there should be another one. Oh, okay, highlights. There's a folder of them. So what I recommend is actually using a light object and then using and or forcing it to use uh, one of these lens flares here. That way you can also have lots of control. For example, if you wanted it to draw around the let letter. So let's go to change text here. Which one's which? That's that one there. So I'm going to copy and paste that. I'm going to give it no depth. Let's uh, make it editable. That's even given me a path. Lovely. So I'm just going to do it on the one. Let's check it. Yeah, that's as I expected. Okay, and then I'm going to use this light. Line to path. Touch to the path. And uh, then what I'm going to do is animate the lights going around it. Again, that timeline's a little too long. So four seconds should be enough. 100% add a keyframe. And that would be quite nice is the lens flare will go or highlight or draw around the letter. What would be even nicer still is if it varies in strength as well. So I'm going to add 50% to be 100. 
and so it kind of fades in and fades out. Okay, I'll turn the other ones off just so there's no confusion. Now, if you're using this project for the first time, it won't automatically give you the right um, render settings. You actually need to force lens effects on, or else these lens flares won't actually do anything. So I render that quickly now. Why haven't you rendered? Oh, that's because that's the zero. Okay, so <laughs> let's try that again. Okay, is it because it's behind the object perhaps? If I move that spline slightly further forward, uh, lens flares, if they're behind an object, won't render. There we go. Third time with this charm. So as it goes round, it'll get fainter. Yeah, let's just go to front view, it's easier. In fact, let's do a real time interactive render window over the bit we're interested in. Come on. There we go. So as we do this, we've got this little highlight going around the one, which is very cool. So if we did that for the letters, that would look awesome. Okay, and um, that's me done. Um, so I've, I've had a pretty good time playing with these, and uh, if anyone else would like some more tutorials on any of these titles, um, or if you get stuck doing a project, let me know, and I'll see how I can help. Okay, take care, goodbye.